No, again, we've practiced this. H naught mu is 30. H A mu is greater than 30. And then we define the parameter where mu is the true mean lifetime of the new deluxe AAA batteries. Then they gave us a p-value. You should be able to interpret that p-value. We have that in the notes from Friday. That's not what today is about, though. I want you to walk out of here feeling like you can draw a conclusion now. This is on the state plan do conclude. This is the last step that you'll have to do on the significance test. We'll put it all together tomorrow. Okay. So, what conclusion now can we yes, make? Sir. Now, this is a template. This is something you have to memorize. What conclusion can you make for a significance at alpha is equal to 0 0.05? Again, this is the conclude step. So let's, a quick recap, what have we done so far? I gave you that Harvard example about people who binge drink. I showed you all the steps, state, plan, do, conclude. Then we practice just that state part, the writing the hypotheses. The next day we talked about, okay, we're not gonna do the, the do part, that's, or I'm sorry, state, plan, the conditions part. We've done that a lot. And then finally, on Friday, we did the p-value part. What does the p-value actually mean? And now we take that p-value, we make a decision based off of it. That's the conclude part. We'll put it all together tomorrow. Please write down this template, and then we'll fill in the missing words. <coughs> because our p-value is approximately blank, for the test statistic blank, I blank the h naught at a significance level of 0.05. <coughs> I blank for, and then we'll fill it in. Again, we'll use this template tomorrow. So hopefully everyone will have that in their notes. Everyone who's gone, have the template down. That's the biggest thing I just want down, is that template we'll practice again tomorrow. Now this alpha right here, alpha of 0 0.05, this right here I want you to circle. This is our cutoff. What is a cutoff? If our p-value is smaller than this, we know we can reject H naught, okay? If your p-value is less than alpha, we can reject H naught, okay? So here's our statement. Because our p-value is approximately, and what did they tell us our p-value was? What does it say in there? I don't have it up. 0 0.0276. For the test statistic, do they give us either the z-score or the t-score? They don't give it to us there. We're dealing with means, so are we going to deal with zoms or toms? What did we learn with the confidence interval? Zoms or toms? Zoms is proportion. Toms is means. We're dealing with means. For a test statistic, t is equal to a number. They don't give it to us. Right? My question to you, is our p-value less than our alpha? Is 0 0.0276 less than 0 0.05? Yes. Yes, it is. So you are going to reject. I reject the H naught at a significance level of 0 0.05. Where did I get this? This is your alpha. The first, it's two sentences. The first part of your sentence is your decision. Your decision has to be linked to your p-value. I reject each naught. Why? Because my p-value is less than my alpha. That's the first sentence. I'm going to repeat that because it's that important. Your conclusion is always two sentences. The first sentence is 
Are you going to reject H9 or are you going to fail to reject H9? Okay? I reject H9 at a significance level of 0 0.05. Our second sentence is now about HA. Do we have evidence for or do we not have evidence for? Well, if we reject H9, so we're going to say, I reject this. If I reject that, what do I say? Do I have evidence for this or do not have evidence for it? I have evidence for it. Okay, right? So our first sentence is always about the H not. You always make a decision to reject or fail to reject. Okay? Reject or fail to reject. Our second sentence then is about HA. You either have evidence or you don't have evidence for. Okay? In your conclusion. We're going to practice this a ton, so it will come naturally eventually. Again, two sentences. First sentence is about H not. I reject or I fail to reject. How do I know to reject? The cutoff. You link that to the p value. They'll give you a cutoff. If they don't give you a cutoff, you always use alpha is equal to 0 0.05. Uh oh, I'm at 13 minutes. Okay, going back. So I do have evidence. What do I have evidence for? This is where you need it in context, ladies and gentlemen. This is where you need it in context of HA. So what is HA? Go back here. Um, what is mu equal to? What did we say? The true mean time, or the true mean lifetime of the new deluxe triple A batteries is what? Greater than, greater than 30, 30 hours. Okay, so we're going to write that down. For the true mean lifetime of triple A batteries is greater than, oh, I'm running out of room, 30 hours. Use your state part, those hypotheses to help you. Questions there. Yes. Is that what their p value is less than yep, your p value has to be less than your alpha. That's not infinity. Okay. It's alpha, sorry. My little fish like curved up. Now I just have one more statement to show you and I'm done. You guys have done a nice job. What do you notice here on part B? What did I do? Yeah, I changed the alpha now. I made the alpha smaller. So now our p-value is what compared to alpha? Our p-value is bigger. When your p-value is bigger than alpha, now you have to do that. Now I'm out of room. Fail the next page. Yeah, so when your p-value is greater than alpha, you have to fail to reject. If you fail to reject H0, what does that mean then? You do not have evidence for HA. Again, this is all on that pink sheet here. Okay, the big thing about that decision, it is all right there in that third one. Okay, that summary, that will help you. We'll practice this a ton, so don't worry. Questions? Okay, so write down the sentence frame and then I will help you fill it in. I feel weird being videotaped. <laughs> because our p-value is approximately blank for the test statistic blank, I blank the h naught at a significance level of 0. Point, ooh, I lied there. This should be 0. 0.01, right? Yeah. Why? That's the given alpha. I blank for blank.
The first sentence is always about your decision for each knot. Your second sentence then is always about each eight, and that needs to be in context. The first sentence does not need to be in context. Now, because Shelby's arms are probably getting tired, I'll give you another minute and then let's pull this in and be done. Because our p-value is approximately zero, 0.0276. For a test statistic, a test statistic is always your ZOMS or your TOMS. Okay? Z's are for proportion, T's are for what? Mu. Mu. And so we have a T. They did not give us a test statistic, so we're going to say T is equal to a number. We don't know it. Again, what did I just say? Our P value? is greater than alpha, so we have to fail to reject each knot. I fail to reject the each knot at a significance level of 0 0.01. If you, um, when you're writing your sentences, just write alpha is equal to 0 0.01, that's fine. Now, do we have evidence or we do not? Now we're talking about each A. No. So, yeah, we do not have evidence. Don't have evidence for the true mean lifetime of triple A battery. Hours? Let's quick summarize again what did we talk about again when you're drawing your conclusions. Let's make it a little nicer here. Just a quick summary of what did I talk about today. You're going to draw a conclusion today, guys. Your conclusion is going to be one of two things. When you draw your conclusion, you're going to look at your p-value. If your p-value is less than alpha, your first sentence will say something about we reject h naught. We have a second sentence will be about h a. We have evidence for. If our p-value is greater than alpha. We fail to reject. We do not again that's summarized in that one big pink sheet with all that writing on it. That comes from a different textbook of mine that I really like, so please read through that. I've talked about it already. Any other questions? 